and we have categorized which type of anemia it is and this VRT of anemia, we know the symptoms, what to address and we have to plan for what has to be given, what type has to be given, whether it is urgent depending upon the gestational age. Suppose the patient comes at 36 weeks or 37 weeks where there is uh, less number of days for her. We, she can deliver at any part of time. Then oral supplementation will not help much to increase her Hb levels. Then we have to switch over to the parental drug. So if it is in early pregnancies, we can always give oral forms. So the types of oral forms, many types are available. Ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, ferrous ascorbate, and ferrous gluconate. Among all these, we see the elemental iron. How much elemental iron is there? Because only 10% of what is given will be observed. And this will be used for the hemoglobin synthesis. So ferrous ascorbate is very good. Apart from just the dietary uh, supplementation, we also advise them to have iron-rich food. Iron-rich food are like dates, palak, pomegranate, anji, and a good, that is jaggery. So these are all rich in iron content. And we should ask them to avoid phytates and caffeine. This will decrease the absorption of, they interfere with the absorption of iron. And supplementation of vitamin C, proteins, all this enhances in building up of a hemoglobin. So these are the oral forms that are available and they come with the various stages. So in eight to 11 grams of anemia, and in early pregnancy, we give oral iron as a daily dose. Once daily, we have to give. After food or with food can be given. And food specifically, I have told this, uh, which decrease absorption has to be avoided. Then if it is very less, like eight grams, we always give as a two-time dose, BD dose. If there is usually with this oral iron, there will be improvement by two weeks at uh, two grams per day. If there is any failure to respond, there is, there is no increase in the, uh, there is no subsidence of the symptoms or you don't find any clinical improvement. Then again, you subject them for the test, the hemoglobin test, all the uh, CBC and peripheral smear, and you find that she's not responding to the oral treatment. What is this? Why is it happening? It might be because of inaccurate diagnosis. That is, you have not typed the anemia correctly. It might not be because just iron deficiency anemia. There might be associated B12 or folic acid deficiency. Or in rare cases, it may be because of the other disorders, as I mentioned, as a thalassemia. Or you might have not looked into the bleeding disorders. Or there might be just a faulty absorption or she's not taking the medication. It's very common because the iron tablets per se will cause more of gastric irritation and patients tend to uh, neglect them or avoid them. So it may be a coexistent infection also. All these have to be looked into when there is a failure to respond. So what are the indicators for response is good. How do you assess? The patient will say that she's feeling better she has improved her appetite, but the paleness will decrease. And there is a hemoglobin rise about 0.5 to 0.7 grams per deciliter per week. Usually this will take three weeks because synthesis itself will take three weeks. And we'll find reticulocytes. That is, synthesis has started and they are finding this. So if you think that oral iron is not acceptable, by the patient, she's not tolerating, or you know that there is no time, she might deliver any time, and she requires uh, the treatment, then we can go for the parental treatment. So what are the types? You have iron, sucrose, everything. So how do you calculate? What dose has to be given? You can't keep on giving uh, uh, iron injections every day and uh, lead to toxicity. We calculate the dose according to weight into K one formula that is weight in kgs into iron deficit that is the preferred hemoglobin level her level minus her level will give iron deficit into 2.2 and we add on 1000 milligrams 
for the iron stores. So this is the formula by which you calculate the dose and we keep uh, the injectables. The response will be seen in a week as a one gram per week raise in the hemoglobin level. And the reticulocyte count will also increase by five to 10 each day. There will be clinically symptoms will improve and she will feel good. So the types of uh, supplementations, the absorption rate, the GI side effects. This is uh, fair types of uh, iron supplementations, ferric ammonium citrate, federate, fumarate, sulfate, carbonyl iron. These are the various types that are available in the market. F but we have found that ferrous ascorbate is good. It gives the rise in the hemoglobin as 6.8% with absorption of 38 to 40% and side effects are less with the ascorbate type of form. So after knowing all this, once we treat the patient with the uh, iron, there should be an improvement by two to three weeks and you should be clinically, she should be clinically uh, looking well and uh, <clears throat> the hemoglobin levels should increase. Uh, what will happen if you do not correct hemoglobin? They will end up with the severe anemia and they can go into failure. And on the maternal side, the, there will be failure, PPH, involution, and the rate of cesarean section will also increase because of the distress forms. There will be fet uh, from the fetal side, IUGR, FGR. Really fetal growth retardation will be there. So avoid all this, iron has to be improved. Hemoglobin levels have to be brought to normal. Suppose a patient is coming regularly to the OPD by the time she delivers uh, to avoid all the complications. Then the other part is just, I'll have a few words on hemoglobin. I'll not go in detail. So it's a you know, hemoglobin serum ferritin has to be evaluated. You can give oral supplements of ferritin uh, iron if the ferritin levels are less than 30 micrograms per deciliter. Unknown hemoglobin status. We haven't done him electrophoresis. You just look into the, if it is not available, in the poor setting resources, it's not available. Then just look into the indices, hypochromic, microcytic anemia. Then you start an iron, oral iron therapy. So if hemoglobinopathy is present, we have to wait for three weeks with the oral iron therapy and then subject her to the other test. If still you do not find any response, no response in the hemoglobin, then we have to look for B12 levels and folate levels also. So this is how it looks in other types of anemia. That is MCH more than 27. Uh, with the ferritin as normal in him and hemo, uh, HB electrophoresis normal, thalassemia is unlikely. One gene deletion of alpha thalassemia is not excluded. I'm just talking about the thalassemia type. And in HBS is present, this is maybe carrier for sickle cell disease. If the ferritin levels are quite low, but electrophoresis is normal, this is because of reduced iron store that is iron deficiency anemia, but thalassemia can also be not excluded. If the levels are less than 27 and the ferritin levels are normal, but HbA2 is increased, she's a carrier for beta thalassemia. The HbF is also increased in that type. These are the types of hemoglobin chains. HbA2 is normal, but HbH is present. She's a carrier for alpha type of thalassemia. HbS is present, it's a carrier for sickle cell state. So, or there may be coexistent thalassemia also in these cases. Then if uh, it's normal, the electrophoresis is normal, alpha thalassemia carrier will also be there. For this to rule out, you have to send for DNA testing. If MCH is less than 27 picograms and the ferritin levels is low and electrophoresis is again normal, this is iron deficiency or coexisting thalassemia you have to again send for DNA testing. So to send for automated CBC, low HB, hypochromic micro, uh, microcytic anemia, that is MCV is low, MCH is also low, and the RBC count is MCHC, all these things you see in the smear. Again, 
the normal RBC, normal MCHC, thalassemia is likely. Then definitely go for HB electrophoresis. In that, if you find raised A2, it's a beta thalassemia, can subject here for DNA PCR. And if it is a normal A2, it might be because of alpha thalassemia. Then DNA PCR, a silent beta thalassemia. The low RBC, low MCHC, iron deficiency anemia is most likely. You can go for the iron, serum iron studies and serum ferritin levels to know how much you have to give and how long you should give. And you can plan your treatment. So I was talking about the government programs. So the power of the first 1,000 days. This is a common slide I'm showing for the children as well as the women. So 1,000 days is a critical day, critical window period to ensure that the child will survive and thrive. But this is by the UNICEF. So nutritional deficiencies, everything should be addressed and uh, no woman or child should go for the nutritional deficiency. That is the aim of UNICEF. So government initiatives to crop down the anemia prevalence. So they have initiated this 12 by 12 initiative. That is iron therapy initiative towards infinite potential in anemia free India. Anemia Mukt Bharat. This is also another program. Abhiyan Poshan is again one more government scheme. It has got a various government programs to combat anemia. Despite this, we again see there is iron deficiency anemia, which is prevalent. Now we have increased national awareness and governmental intervention programs. The prevalence anemia among the Indian women is high, which should come down. So it's India accounts for large number of anemia cases in the world. And especially this is nutritional deficiency. So supplement with iron folic acid, vitamin B12 supplementation. It's a main player for managing anemia. You have to detect beta thalassemia, which is again important to prevent the major birth defect and electrophoresis. So we can go for chorionic villus biopsy, amniotic cell, amniocentesis to detect the thalassemia earlier. We have to avoid transfusions by characterizing the anemia and you have to treat with relevant therapy. However, the prevalence of anemia is continuously rising in spite of all these commitments and programs. So there has to be some social programs uh, and more and more awareness has to be brought out, especially addressing the adolescent women, which will reduce the prevalence of iron deficiency. Before they become pregnant, you have to reduce the iron deficiency. The oral therapy is the cornerstone. In difficult cases, we can go for parental therapy. Oral therapy is just most effective, it can improve the compliance and safety. So we have to empower the woman by supplementing the iron. So thank you, that's a great deal of iron deficiency anemia.